Welcome back. Okay, so function notation and a little bit on composition of functions. I love putting in these functions or even relations in this input and output format because visually it just kind of makes sense to me. So if we have some kind of an input, for example, my voice right now going into the recorder and it is being captured and then the output is hopefully again my voice of course also videos and then the surrounding images that you see here and they get projected out onto your monitor so it's kind of a, a nice relation okay between inputs and outputs now in math we always like to encode things in terms of numbers and then as we generalize things you know we start to utilize relations and um, we move over to functions which are just a special type of relation now if you've missed the difference between functions and relations you can look that up okay i'll put a link up above so here if we have an input and then if we have an output what are these function notations well because we very often have all of these relations that we work with once we know that they are really just a function we want to have a specific notation for them so that the reader can easily know that okay you're dealing now with a function now how do we do that or how do we notate these things so for example if you had um, these particular relations so i'll say a straight line y is equal to and i'm just going to make this up let's say 3x plus 2 so the slope is 3 and then the y-intercept is 2. Now we know that this is a relation, it's a linear relation, but we also know that this is actually a function, right? So if we know that this is a function, instead of actually writing it typically in this format, which is a relationship format, there's nothing wrong with it. We like to sometimes write this as, instead of this output y, okay, we designate this y and we typically will say, so as a function, so let's say a function f, where the input is your x, and that is equal to 3x plus 2. So all we're doing is we're just really setting y is equal to f of x, which is what we say, so f of x, or sometimes f at x. And what that means is that we have a particular function, uh, which is a relation, okay, and we would write it like this. Now, you might say, well, you know, I got so used to doing this, you know, why all of a sudden do I have to now switch to this? Well, the reason is because as you keep studying, we really want to be able to work with functions and then have a particular notation so that when we look at it, we kind of right away know that, oh, this is just a function. So that's what we do. So that's the notation that we switch over. And now, because we run out okay, of this kind of letter sometimes, and we don't always use just f on its own as a function, so don't be surprised. You know, you can write these functions, okay, not just with an f. You can, for instance, say g of x or g at x is equal to 3x plus 2. But the idea is that the notation okay, is that you're going to have some function which you're going to define. So typically we use the letter F, but if you have more than one, like two or three, okay, then you know, we're not going to use the same F. We might use a different F. And when we do these input and output relationships, which is what I love to do, okay, so now we have an input which is your X. So here is your input X. And now I love to put this, you know, function f at x or f of x, okay, inside of this box. So that is this x, okay, gets inserted in here. Something happens to it, so some function, okay, is acting on it. And then it spits out an answer for us and gives us an output. And that output can be f of x or, you know, we can call it just simply y as I have written it here so this would have been just f of x so that is the function notation and you would do that for many of the other relations that you have already studied so here is another example you know let's say a quadratic say it was minus 2 okay, x plus 4 squared minus let's say 10. so this is a quadratic in vertex form and if you wanted to 
write this as a function because these quadratics are actually functions. Okay, then instead of writing y, okay, and relating y to x, or so making this a relation, it still is one, you would just simply say, all right, let me replace this y and just simply say f of x. So here is your input x into your function, and now you would just simply rewrite this. It would look exactly the same here, so nothing really changes. But as soon as you write this notation, so this special notation that we have right here, this is known as the function notation. And that's what you would have. And you can write these function notations. Typically, you'll write it as f of x um, or f at x. But if you have multiple functions, you know, you won't write always f. Maybe you'll write g of x, all right, or h of x, or some other letter. But you will always have, okay, these little brackets in there with your input coming into your function. Now, for composition of functions, so when you have multiple things, and you kind of would want to be able to see this, and it sure, surely does happen, right? So you can think of real life, you know, if you have multiple steps in order to finish something, which, you know, so eventually you have some input, maybe some raw materials coming into a factory, and then eventually out of those raw materials, you know, comes out a car. You know, clearly you would think that there would be multiple steps along the way in order to do that. And in math, if we want to be able to designate so multiple things happening, so this is just a visual representation. So you have an input and let's say maybe, you know, we have our first, okay, so let's say function F or maybe I'll call it because now we'll have two of them. So let me call this one G. All right, so this is the function G of X. So my input comes in. Okay, so this function, whatever function this might be, maybe linear, maybe quadratic or something else. And then it gives me this output. Now it gives me an output in here, but this output would have been g of x because that's after the first thing. And now this output is the new input into your, let's say, another function. So this would have been, let's, let me call this f, all right? And now it's no longer an X coming in here because what's coming in here is G of X. I'm going to put a little dot here. All right. But this G of X is coming in here. So you, would, you know, we could write it F and then my input now is another result from the original function. This is called the composition. So you have composed basically two different functions. And now, of course, you're going to have an output coming out at the end there. Now, are you restricted just to two? No, this can be a chain of multiple things, right? So you can have one input coming in, something happens to it, okay? Then it comes out, then it goes into a new function, something happens to it, and then it kind of continues on. But most of the time when you're starting this in kind of grade 11, they will typically just give you two. And this is... Um, something which we like to write. So instead of this, which is not a very nice way of writing it, it's still correct. If you have multiple things, you know, we sometimes will say F, okay? And then we write this little O, okay? And we have that. So, you know, we sometimes use this little notation when we have composition where this G, okay, of X is basically the input into your function f. If it was reversed, you know, we could have written it as simply, you know, maybe g. And then so if you wanted to have f to be the actual input to that, this would have been written as g okay, of f like this. And then sometimes, you know, they write a little x in here, because that is the original input. All right, so it's basically, you know, what is an element from your domain, and then, you know, your range, which is going to be your final output, is actually a composition of two functions. And we write it like this. And this is now much easier to write if instead of actually using the relationships between one and another. All right. So that's what you would have. And an example of this. So, for instance, if maybe, you know, your G of X, your first one was, say, X plus two. So that was your actual function there. And then your f, okay, so let's say f of x, 
is, for instance, you know, x squared. So if that was my second one. So if this is the input, so notice if that is the actual original input. And so if I'm looking at it from this point of view, so right here, so what you would have is, so you would have this, which is your x plus two. That would have been your output right here. And then what you would have to do is, so whatever that output is, you're gonna have to take x squared. But this x that you see right here, okay, is taking in your new output from right there. So your new or your input is coming in from that side. So what you would have is the following. So you have f of, okay, your g of x, okay, so it goes like this, and now this is equal to, so this is your first one, so it would have been f, now your g of x is actually x plus 2, that would have been your full input, okay, so that is your new input into your function f, but your function f is x squared, so if that is your input right here, so that's going to go into right there and you're gonna square it. So this would have been x plus two squared. And that would have been the, the final result of your f of g x. So the notation is a little weird, but this is the introduction to it and you will start seeing these types of notations in terms of functions. Remember, a function is just a relation. It's just a special relation where your actual input will have a unique output. It won't have multiple outputs. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in a future video on functions. Bye everybody.